He's Yukon Cornelius. She's Clarice on the Burger Meister Meister Burger. <laughs> this, this might be the Island of Misfit Toys, but it's not. It's Vikings Report with Drew and Ted, our Christmas Eve edition. Drew, how are you? We're on the island of Christmas Eve, Ted. Tomorrow's Christmas. Yeah, I figured that out. You've been a good boy. Santa going to bring you some presents this year? No, Santa doesn't bring me anything in here. <laughs> <laughs> He brought me too much stuff. In the, he got in trouble for it. He brought me in the 80s. So uh, we're not on speaking terms anymore, me and Santa. But he's a good dude. He's a good dude. Hey, man, we're here for Christmas. We Bring are. Episode 46. We're on Turbo. So let me start out with this quick little song. You put one foot in front, front of, of the other. other. <laughs> there you go. Put one foot in front of the other. And soon you'll be walking out the door. Soon I'll tell you what, you man. Walking across <laughs> the floor. I, lo- I loved like those stop motion Christmas specials. Rudolph oh, the Red Nosed Reindeer. Beautiful. Santa Claus is coming to town. Frosty, the Charlie Brown Christmas. You know, when the CBS special thing came on with the word special doing the circle. Right. And you knew, you knew, you knew it was time for some good stuff. That was a big, big day. Usually on the same day when I was growing up when we were kids, the frosty one and then yeah. the Santa Claus. It seemed like a, like a 17-hour event. But it, it, Yeah, they, they hit fast and furious, man. And if you, like, missed one, you probably missed them all. <laughs> you were done for, like, the year, and you're like, <laughs> What about the kid that wanted to be a dentist? Remember yeah, Hermie. I want you to be a dentist. <laughs> do you mind telling me what you do want to do? Well, sir, someday I'd like to be a... A dentist. A dentist? <laughs> I want to be a dentist. Ted remembers his name. Hermie. Oh, that was, oh, was great. That's yeah, a great show. Ted? Yeah. I'm cooler than you are, so why don't you fix your little Christmas problem and light this candy cane? <laughs> He's right. Send out the reindeer. <laughs> yes! Resume the countdown! <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'm cooler than you are. Why don't you fix your little problems and light this candle? He's right. Let's light this candle. He surely is. Light the candle. Yes. Resume the countdown. Ho, ho, ho. ho, 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 ho. All right. Look, we we are kind of doing a scaled down show this week. We got a lot of presents to wrap. We got family. We got a whole bunch of stuff. So we're going to hit the highlights, but we've got a a little bit of Vikings news. We're going to talk about Kirk a little bit. We're still doing hashtag nobody cares about your fantasy segment. We're still doing a preview. We're still doing trivia. But we are going to try and roll through this like uh, the Vikings rolled through the Bears on Monday. No, wait. We're going to try and go faster than that. We're going to try and be more efficient. So let's roll. All right. Vikings news this week. After the Monday night game came out, per pro football focus, Kirk Cousins, 0 for 18 with two interceptions when under pressure. His 87 passing yards against the Bears was his lowest in 118 career starts. His previous low was 98 for the Vikings on September 8th, 2019 versus Atlanta. What's wrong with Kirk Cousins? What is going on with him, Ted Glover? Like, do you remember the San Francisco game? I think it was the first play of the second half he threw an interception. He really hasn't seemed right since then. Am I I wrong there? No, no, you're not. I don't know what's going on. He's got Russell Wilson disease. I don't know if you watched that guy play against the the Rams a couple days. I mean, God, terrible. He feels like he's done. He just, yeah, he's trying to play his way out of Seattle if he wants out of there, one of the two, but you'd hate to think professional competitors throw in the towel, but with Kirk, it's, it's weird to watch because he's lost all of his confidence. I bet you'll be the best. Oh, I don't know. That touchdown pass he threw to Jefferson in the corner of the end zone when he uh-huh. dropped it in there. That was yeah. a very, very confident play, very confident pass. Then he asked nothing the rest of the game. Well, he he had that TD throw to Amir Smith Marset, which I, I could have threw that, Ted. He I was mean, wide open, but he still made in, instead of forcing it to a guy like Jefferson, if you look on the replay, he was covered by two or three guys. Smith Marset broke open in the corner and, and he made the right read and threw it to him. So I I give him credit for that. No, he ain't made the right read, but Jose Feliciano on playing his Christmas special could have made that pass. Come, they told me, ba ba bum bum Come on, man. <laughs> but 
one foot in front of the other, bro. Burger Meister Meister Burger. Now, the main reason for all this gloom was the mayor. A mean old grouch of a fellow who was known as Burgermeister Meister Burger. <laughs> I am talking about a lot of the misses he has on the in routes that some of the Vikings, the passes he was making over the middle were just late. Yeah. They were so late, the defender was able to get there and get a hand in it. Well, when you're late, you're usually not very confident, is what I read into it. So I don't know what's going on with them, but they're going to make 7-7. Seven seven. They're going to run to the playoffs. They're going to have to win a couple games here at the, at the tail end of the season. He better get it together starting this week. Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? What do you think's wrong with him? Well, I was going to ask you, do you think he's injured? We have both said he played very well this year up until that interception in San Francisco. Came back. The following games were the Detroit game where he struggled, didn't play well. Vikings lost. The Pittsburgh Steelers game, he made a couple of really nice throws, and it sort of seemed like he was working his way out of it, but he still didn't have great numbers. And then this Bears game where he was just absolutely putrid. And there's really no excuse for him putting up such poor numbers with a guy like Justin Jefferson. K.J. Osborne has been playing well. Adam Thielen's been hurt. But you still got Tyler Conklin. You got Dalvin Cook out of the backfield. He's got plenty of weapons to utilize. When you watch him throw compared to some of the dimes he was throwing earlier in the year and how off target he is now, I'm thinking there might be something wrong with his shoulder or his elbow or, or foot or his plant. I don't know. It seems weird that it's been this noticeable or substantial of a drop off these last three-ish games. The, the idea of him being injured has crossed my mind as we, of the last couple of days when I'm thinking what could be wrong with him. Maybe he's hurt and not saying anything to anybody, but uh, Kirk Cousins is one of those quarterbacks that gives off body language when he's not playing well at all. He just Some guys like Montana, you know, they, just, they were the same all the time. Some guys are just the same all the time. You can tell when Kirk is really struggling, and he has that look to him. In the pocket, on the sidelines, he may be hurt. Maybe he is. I don't know, but that, that did cross my mind, yes, that he may be injured a little bit. Well, with the Rams and the Packers coming up before they end the season against the Bears, he better figure out what's ailing him, whether it's physical or mental, and get it figured out because the Vikings are going to need the first 12 or 13 games of the season, well, 10 or 11 games of the season, Kirk Cousins, as opposed to the guy we've seen the last two and a half. Because if if that Kirk Cousins shows up, they don't stand a chance against the Rams. They don't stand a chance against the Packers, if if you ask me. Let me ask you something, Ted. Do they have to win both of these next two games or just one of them? They have to win both. I, I believe they have to win both, yeah. I think they have to win out to make sure they get to the playoffs. Somebody mentioned the, the six most terrifying words a Vikings fans can hear is the, the Vikings have the playoff destiny in their hands or whatever that phrase was. God will not permit this to happen. I am going to be allowed to fulfill my destiny. Ten wins gets you in. Nine wins means you're relying on tiebreakers, and the, and the Vikings are in the seventh spot right now. But you lose one of those games. You lose to the Rams, and, and Washington wins, or whoever, New Orleans wins, whatever, who's ever right behind the Vikings, and it's a, it's a slew of teams. Now you have to do the well. Now if these guys lose and those guys win, and I think you need to win out to, to make sure you get to the playoffs. Can they still get in at nine and eight? I, I think they could. But 10, 10 and 7 assures you a playoff spot. The winning both of the next two, that's a really tall order, man. Yeah, it is. Right now, 538 has them before these last three games at 29% to get in. The Saints' last three games are Miami, Carolina, and Atlanta. you, you got to think they're probably going to win out. The Eagles' last three games are the Giants at Washington football team, Dallas. you got to figure they'll probably be favored for a couple of those games so that – the teams, the Vikings are right in the thick of it with have easier schedules than, than Minnesota does. I, I would think they would have to win these games. And, and, and if they do win those games, they do win out, they go 10 and 7. I think you can say, look, they beat the Rams, they beat the Packers back to back, and they took care of business against the Bears. I'd feel a lot better about them getting into the playoffs with those wins on the resume late in the year as opposed to splitting those and beating the Bears and, and winning a couple tiebreakers based on how other teams do to, to kind of back in. I, that's just me, though. No, I agree. You'd certainly have more confidence with the team if you ran the table and you're heading into the playoffs with some quality wins on your belt. Yeah. And it seems like 100% of the people want the Vikings to go to the playoffs, the fans, but also 100% of them feel that they'll only have one playoff game. It's kind of like that's, that's what I'm hearing right now. But you always want your team to at least make the postseason part. Hey! Of course. I mean, you can't win it if you're not 
at the dance. So that's I, right, Santa Claus Glover. Give me, <laughs> give me a little Santa Claus real quick. Give me a Santa Claus impression. Ho ho ho! I didn't ask you to tell me about Aaron Rodgers' girlfriend. <laughs> so, anyways, that's kind of where we are with Kirk and the Vikings, the playoff spot. I I think winning out guarantees them their postseason. I, we'll see whether or not that happens. We'll have the preview coming up in a minute. Any injuries from Sunday? Do you know about? Not that I've heard, no. Before we get to our preview, though, uh, hashtag nobody cares about your fantasy segment. <laughs> That's against the wall. No, it's Ed. Vikings uncensored beat us again, brother. They are up nine to six, which means if you do your math right, we got to run the next three just to get a tie, which I'm happy with. Just to kiss your sister, we got to run the table. <laughs> awesome. But you have to put one foot in front of the other, though. Yeah. To get there. yeah, you sure do. If we don't do well doing with with this, we can be we can become dentists. Maybe like Herman. What's his <laughs> like, name? Like Hermie. Hermie. I want to be a dentist for our fantasy football contest. Drew, congratulations! You won. You've got six wins on the year. I've got five. Ruby's got four. How we do really doesn't matter. How this works, you guys have been playing long enough. You know, we pick a quarterback, running back, two wide receivers, a tight end every week. Once we pick those players, we can't use them anymore. We're not picking any players from the Thursday games, at least not intentionally. (laughs) This week, because we've got Saturday games, we decided to throw the Saturday games in there. So we're not picking the Thursday game and the Saturday games, which are Cleveland, Green Bay, the 49ers in Tennessee and Indianapolis at Arizona. So we are not picking players from any of those three games. So what we do, standard PPR format of the players we announce, you guys pick who you think is going to get the most points that week. Team Ted, Team Tunes, Team Ruby, put it in the comments right below us on, on YouTube, not on Facebook, not on Twitter. If you pick the correct team that wins, you get a point. If you get the most points at the end of the year, you win. And last week we had how many winners, Drew? Six? Six people won, Ted. Six people picked my team. They all picked up a point. It's made it a log jam, and it's made it very interesting, my friend. GMAC, who leads with eight wins, picked your team. You didn't win. Second place, Andrew Erickson has seven wins. He picked Team Toonses. And four of the six people, four or five of the six people who won had six wins. They all move up to Andrew Erickson's seventh spot. Now we got a cluster at seven, one win behind GMAC. This thing is a train heading out of control for the championship. It's great. And those are the winners right there that Drew was talking about or the the season standings. If you do happen to win at the end of the year, you get two really cool prizes. You get the Vikings plaque of football cards. Very nice, really great players done in a high quality frame and card holders, eight of them. And then that alcohol flask from the early 1970s, which is really, really cool. Got Randall Cunningham's number on there, but it's obviously not Randall Cunningham. All right, Drew, since you won, why don't you tell us who your fantasy team is for this for this week? I'm going to try to do my best Burr lives. <laughs> my quarterback is Joe Burrow from the Bengals. My running back is Jones from Tampa Bay. One wide receiver is Darnell Moody from the Bears. Mooney, my other wide receiver is Devontae Parker from the Dolphins. And my tight end is our own Tyler Conklin, who's going to get two TDs right. this week, baby. Yeah! He did really well for me the week I picked him. He had two scores of the week I picked him, if I remember correctly. Ruby, I know you've been pretty quiet this show, but uh, you want to tell us who your championship caliber team is this week? All right. My team this week, Matt Ryan, Falcons. Antonio Gibson, Washington. Hunter Renfro, I have no idea what team he's on. No idea. Dalton Schultz, no idea. (laughs) And there's my team. That's a lot of quality research put into this this week. Drew, you got a good team this week. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Ruby, I think you got a good team, depending on what team these guys play for. (laughs) I don't know either, to be quite honest. But, But here's the team I think you guys should pick this week. Let's hear it. My quarterback is Matty Ice, Matt Ryan of the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, My running back, I'm doubling up with another Atlanta Falcon and going with Cordero Patterson. My wide receiver, Odell Beckham Jr. My other wide receiver, Devontae Parker of the Miami Dolphins. And then my tight end. So there you go. Those are all our teams as you see them up there. Yep. Ruby's putting our teams up on the board. Go ahead and and decide who you think is going to win. 
Team Toonsis, Team Ted, or Team Drew in the comments section here on YouTube, not on Facebook, not on Twitter. If you pick the correct team, you get one point. Hashtag nobody cares about your fantasy <laughs> segment is over. <laughs> All right. I think I'm looking around. The AM radio station connection is established. We'll get Robert W. Farnsworth on here to introduce the preview against the Rams. Hello, everybody. Robert W. Farnsworth here. This week, Tinseltown comes to the Midwest as Sean McVay and the dastardly Los Angeles Rams visit U.S. Bank Stadium. Will the Minnesota Vikings keep their playoff hopes alive, or will they end up on the cutting room floor? We'll find out. Okay. Robert Farnsworth, thank you for that. Robert, intro. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. The I believe it's 10-4 and four now. Los Angeles Rams come to U.S. Bank Stadium this week. The Minnesota Vikings at 7-7 are facing once again yet another must-win game. I felt like we've been saying that since almost week two, since the beginning of the season. Tough game for the Vikes. It's, it's a home game. Tall order this week, I think. All right, Ruby's going to put up our uh, preview board. As you can see, all our different categories, we start at quarterback, we work all the, all the way down through our important position groups and end up at intangibles. intangibles. <laughs> First category is quarterback. Drew, what do you got? Who you got, Matthew Stafford or Kirk Cousins? I'm going to pick Cousins for the check mark, but it comes with big caution, Ted. I think he has to turn it around, and I think those old Viking memories that Stafford has has to be swirling around his head a little bit. He's had some nightmarish games at that stadium. I think for this particular game, if I was given a season-long check mark, I'd probably go the edge to Stafford. But for this game, I'm going to give my check mark to Cousins. Don't let me down, Kirk. Don't make me look like a fool. I understand your reasoning. I'm giving my Christmas present this week to Matthew Stafford. We talked about Kirk earlier. He's, he's in a pretty bad slump. The one thing I take comfort in, I guess, for lack of a better word, is that this isn't a primetime game. It's a noon Sunday game. And the Vikings offense, when they have to match another offense score for score, they generally do. So that, that gives me hope that the Vikings will play well this week. Which And if they do, that means Kirk has to have a good game. If, if he has a Bears game or if he has a, another Lions game, Vikings are going to be in big trouble. Yeah, Matthew Stafford hasn't had a lot of great experiences coming to Minnesota, but he's never come to Minnesota with the guy that likes a Cooper Cup and that, that really, really, really good Rams defense. Uh, I'm, so I'm going to give it to... Matthew Stafford this week. Uh, running game. The Rams are only like 25th in the NFL and running the ball. If you watch the, the game against Seattle, Sonny Michelle had a, had a pretty good game for the Rams, but Dalvin Cook had a great game. Alexander Madison's coming back. And, oh, by the way, Kane Wong finally got a little bit of extended action. He had two really good back-to-back -back runs. I just like the Vikings run game better here. Check mark to the Vikings. He looked like Robert Smith. He did. With that number two, with the same number and everything, cut, yeah. The way he was cutting through the line, it brought back yeah. visions of Robert Smith. This was a tough call for me, Ted. And I think the Vikings, number one running back, number two with Cook and Madison, are better than Sony Michelle and Henderson yeah. to a player. I think they are. And like you said, the Rams are 25th in rush offense at only 97 yards a game. The reason I'm going to give the Rams the check mark here, even though they don't have better backs, I don't think is the run defense. The Vikings are 27th in the league, and the Rams are 7th. That's quite a big difference. It is, yeah. That's fair. That's the only reason I'm giving them the check mark. If they had even rankings, I think, I would probably go with the Vikings. From what I just mentioned, the talent is better. It cooks better than probably both the Rams guys put together. I know that. But run defense matters when you're, when you're picking this up this board. So 
I did want to do it, but I got to give the check mark to the Rams for the running game for this specific game. All right, receiving game. Why don't you go ahead and take that one first? Man, we got a plethora of good receivers out there, Ted. Cup, OBJ, Van Jefferson, Thielen's coming back, Osborne, and of course the great John Jefferson. John Jefferson. <laughs> That's the Chargers guy. Yeah, he was. I think both teams have great wide receivers. And I think if Thielen plays, this is probably a total push. I want to give both teams a check mark, but I'm going to give the, the Rams a check mark in case Thielen doesn't play. But it's even. It's dead even, pretty much. Even assuming Th- Thielen does play, I'm still going to give my check mark to the Rams for a look, just a slight edge for the same reason you gave the Rams running game the check mark because the Vikings secondary is just so, so bad. I mean, you watch Cooper Cup was wide open all night long with Robert Woods out with he tore his ACL. Ben Skoranowak has has actually played okay. So I, I just think the Vikings are going to have real matchup problems. I mean, OBJ had a very quiet game against Seattle, but he had kind of started to come on. I, I'm just giving my edge to the, to the Rams here. O-line, I'm going to give it to the Rams. Uh, Vikings offensive line just just really hasn't looked right. <sighs> they didn't look good against the Bears and Akeem Hicks, and that just makes me think Eric, Aaron Donald is just going to it's just going to wreck the Vikings offensive line. The Rams offensive line is pretty good. They're only giving up a 14.7% pressure rate to Matthew Stafford. He has a pretty solid pocket to, to throw in almost every throw. And if you give Stafford time, Cooper Cup is going to get open. OBJ is going to get open. Tyler Higby is going to get open. So I'm, I'm giving the check mark to the Rams here. Rams also get my check mark for the offensive line. They're 100% healthy. They got all their starters in there. You got a pretty formidable offensive line when they're rolling in there in sync. The Vikings got pushed around by the Bears. Quinn and Hicks pushed them around. And they got Miller and 10 sack Aaron Donald coming to town. I don't see how it gets any better with it. I mean, you're going from the Bears to the Rams. They both have really stout uh, defensive lines. I don't, the Rams get my check mark. I can't give it to the Vikings. It's not a good matchup for the Vikings, I don't think. What about the defensive line? Rams have 36 sacks. Vikings have an NFL lead, 44 sacks, Ted. Yeah, yeah. The NFL leaders in something. Yay! And good, something good. Something good. <laughs> well, well, that's not Land of the Misfits toys at all. Stafford sacked him nine times. It's got to be in his head. It's all about the 100% sacks. The Vikings lack in run D on their defensive line, but they are good at pressuring the quarterback. I think the Rams are better at stopping the run. And also, they have 36 sacks, so they get my check mark at D-line. I'm giving the check mark to the Rams, too. I mean, the Vikings, where they are so good at rushing the passer and bringing pressure and closing and getting the sack, they are equally as bad at stopping the run. Uh, I mean, the Bears seem to, to run almost a will. The, why they went away from the run with David Montgomery, he was just getting – he was gouging the Vikings at times, and they just seemed to take the ball out of his hands and try and throw the ball, which which seemed – not smart, but I don't think this is a good matchup for the Vikings. Neither, neither side of the, the line seems like a great matchup for the Vikings. I give my check mark to the Rams as well. Linebackers, uh, the Rams traded for Von Miller before the trade deadline. Von Miller and Leonard Floyd are a pretty good linebacking tandem. I think Anthony Barr is playing a lot better since he's come back from his injury when he first started playing. I think it's a pretty even lineup or, or matchup when you're looking at Eric Hendricks and Anthony Barr. Compare that to Leonard Floyd and Von Miller. I'm actually going to give with the way Anthony Barr has been playing, I thought he had a fairly decent game against the Bears. I'm going to give a very slight edge to the to the Vikings here. I am too. I am giving my linebacker check mark to the Minnesota Vikings. And it was close, but the more I researched it, the more I figured the, the way to attack the Rams is really over the middle in the soft zone. That's why I'm expecting Conklin to have maybe six or seven catches this week. They're not very good at covering the short zones over the middle with their linebacker. The guys you just mentioned, Floyd and, and Von Miller, they also have Reeder and Ernie Jones. Yeah. What does Reader and Ernie Jones strike up memory in your head, Ted? Uh, not right, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the Vikings, <laughs> besides some missed tackles at Soldier Field, and I've seen that Kendrick's missed a couple, which is really not like him. I, I like the way the Vikings linebackers have been playing, especially in the red zone. I think yeah. the Vikings linebackers in the red zone have been best in football. I am going to give the check mark to the Vikings linebackers this week. All right. What about the uh, secondary, Drew? Both secondaries are going to have their hands full, Ted. Yep. Like you are at Christmas when you're bringing in all the presents and taking them <laughs> out from the tree. You got your hands full. Safety, <laughs> Taylor Rapp and quarterback Ramsey are both damn good football players. Yeah. 
And they, even though they're going to have their hands full, they are talented individuals. They have great coverage skills and great closing speed, both of them, especially Taylor Rapp. You got to keep an eye on that dude, man. Yeah, yeah. I did a draft write up on him, and there's not many guys with closing speed like that. The Rams' secondary is probably the strongest part of their team, that, besides Aaron Donald. Vikings played a little bit better than the Bears, but they're still a mess. My check mark goes to the Rams for the secondary. Me too. I mean, the Rams are like 23, 23rd in yards given up per game, but they're seventh in interceptions. The Vikings are bad in, uh, they're even worse in yards given up, and they're only 16th in interceptions. So the Rams secondary feels kind of like a feast or famine. You, you saw, if you watch Jalen Ramsey, he goes for an interception a lot. I mean, he'll bait, he'll bait a quarterback. Now, sometimes he gets burned, but sometimes he'll, he'll get a big pick and, and make a big play. I think that is what tilts the Rams secondary to giving me the check. And I, I think Jalen Ramsey one-on-one against either Justin Jefferson or I, what I would assume Justin Jefferson is a better matchup for the Rams than Patrick Peterson on like, say, Cooper Cup. So I, I give the check mark to the Rams there. Red zone. I'm giving my check mark to Los Angeles again. They're, they're 13th on offense and 14th on defense. The Vikings are fourth on offense, which is pretty good, but they are 22nd in defense. That Bears game would have been even worse if, if the Bears hadn't shot themselves in the foot on that Monday night game, getting in the red zone, what, five times or four times only. I don't even think they scored it. Well, they got that garbage time touchdown at the very end when the game was over. So check mark to the Rams here. The Vikings defense in the red zone is 22nd. Mm-hmm. I am taking them, Ted. You know why? Because besides that red zone gaff against the Lions with Amon St. Brown, I, I still don't, don't get me going on that. The Bears are one and five in the red zone. Vikings red zone defense is what's saving them, right? Saved them against the Bears. Uh, that was a saving part of that game, if you ask me. They won the game for the Vikings. The Red I Zone. agree. Yeah, they did. The Bears are one of five. I know the Rams have a lot more experience at quarterback. They're going to have a lot more weapons down there in the Red Zone. But I'm giving my check mark to the Vikings Red Zone. Okay. Special teams, Drew. This could prove to be a big factor in this game, Ted. How's effort, insight, and research? <laughs> a Viking game that could come down to the end. Well done, Drew. Dude, let me throw this at you. Rams kicker Matt Gay has made 65 of 67 kicks. 26 of 27 on field goals and 38 of 39 on extra points. He's missed two kicks all year. I don't know what he did against Seattle, but two. Two kicks. He's only missed two the whole season. Rams get the check mark on that alone. He had a long field goal. And hashtag nobody cares about your fantasy team. Matt Gay is my fantasy team kicker. So I hope you're right in that the Vikings hold the Rams out of the end zone on the red zone, and Matt Gay kicks like four field goals because my fantasy playoffs this week start this week, and I'm going to need a lot of points from a lot of players. Good luck to you, Ted Glover, on your <laughs> fantasy team. What's your fantasy team name? Four Non Mons. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Said, hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Life is just a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> it's real close. I'm going to give a slight edge to the Vikings. Where Matt Gay is a better kicker, I like the Vikings' kickoff returnability with with Kane Wangwu now. Jordan Berry's been a heck of a punter for the Vikings, and I think the Vikings are going to have to be able to pin the Rams deep and make them drive the length of the field to get have a chance to to win. I, I mean, it's it's going to be hard, even as bad as the Vikings' defense is. You still, when you make teams do 12, 14, 15 play drives over and over again, they're going to make a mistake. So. That's going to be a key component to the game. So I'm going to give the Vikings special teams a slight edge here. All right, coaching. (laughs) Sean McVay. You got one guy who's obsessed with game planning, who can't stop game planning, who just wants to game plan, game plan, game plan until it's just, it's weird how much that Sean McVay likes to game. The other guy likes to just, well, we know what the other guy likes to do. Sean McVay took a Jared Goff quarterback team to the Super Bowl. Yeah, right? In every area, he's a better coach, I think, than Mike Zimmer. He is. Yep, yep, he is. He gets the check mark. I mean, didn't take long to research this one. <laughs> All right. Intangibles. What do you got? I got a pretty good intangible. You know, teams struggle when they're on a short week and have the early start on Sunday. Yeah. It's the Ram. Rams didn't only Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday. It's even shorter than the short, short, shortest week. I want to be a dentist. They yeah. are on a short week. <laughs> Teams that are on a short week that play on the early slot, which is 10 o'clock hippie time, they struggle. It happened to the Cardinals this year. It happened to Seattle. I think that's a big intangible. It's a big intangible for this game. That 
And I'm telling you, Stafford has to have some ghosts in his head about the Vikings. You could say he's on a new team and it doesn't matter. He has to have it. And it has to be an intangible that we are in that dude's head. <laughs> that has to be somewhat of an intangible. I'm going to go with those two as my main intangibles this week. My check mark goes to the Vikings for the intangibles. Okay. My intangible, I think it, it all comes down to individual matchups. And I, I, when you look at it, I, I think the Rams just have more matchups. The short week uh, is very much a check mark in the Vikings favor, but I think that is overcome by, by Sean McVay. I'm sure he, I, I don't know what he has advertised for a plan to do it, but I'm sure he'll have a plan to, to have his team ready. The, Vikings control their own playoff destiny is is a, is a term that makes me shudder because whenever they seem to have their fate in their own hands, they just, you know, they're they're like that dude from the office with the big pot of chili just spills it all over the place. I mean, I, I just I just think the Vikings are in their own head. I mean, it's getting late in the year and pressure is ramping up. And although the defense played well against the Bears, this team collectively has not played well since the since that San Francisco game. So I, I'm giving the intangibles to the Rams here. Now, the Vikings are at home, and that's that's huge. But I think the intangibles I, I'm overall I'm going to give to uh, to L.A. So who do you got to, to win this game, Drew? Try to make this short and sweet. I think uh, three weeks ago the Rams were a mess. The two games previous to the Seahawks game they had last Tuesday, they were averaging 34 points a game, and they beat the Cardinals, I think, in that stretch. They were hitting their stride. We talked about the Rams when they start clicking. They're going to click. I don't know, and I was going to throw this back to you. If the, if, can the Vikings win a shootout with the Rams, especially with how Kirk Cousins has been playing the last two weeks? Because the Rams are going to be around 30, I think. I and mean, I don't want the score to be a reflection of my fanship. You people know I love the Vikings. I love the Vikings. But I got to be realistic. They don't get cooked really going on track the way they want to and keep the Rams' offense on the sidelines. It's going to be a struggle day. Can Cousins bounce back? Will Cook have a big game? Both teams are playing for something. The Rams want that number one seed. Coaching, the Rams have the edge there. I have the Rams at about 27-17 right now. I think it all comes down to Kirk Cousins. We we talked about this at the at the beginning of the show. Can Kirk figure it out? That secondary the Bears had were, were practice squad dudes and dudes they, they signed out of the third row 20 minutes before the game started. This is probably a do or die game. The Vikings lose this. They're, they're only at like a 32 or 33% chance to make the playoffs as it is, I believe. 29% per, per 538. So they lose this game, and it's pretty much done. They have to win. And Vikings, more often than not, do not show up in these these big games. You can kind of count on one hand when they, when they have. It was, you know, the playoff game against the Saints, a couple games late in the year in 2019. Once they have it in the clutches of their hands, they usually let it slip through their fingers. So I want the Vikings to win. I, I Of course, I want them to get to the playoffs, but I don't I don't see it happening this week. That's just me. So we'll see. We're, neither of us are optimistic, but hope for the best. Maybe the Vikes can pull one out and, and, and get on a run. All right. That's our preview. We'll take a quick commercial break, and we'll come back with trivia and wrap the show up. Now I have a machine gun. Oh, oh, oh. <sighs> Father Christmas? Oh, uh, hi. I, I, I didn't mean to wake you. Was just trying to find the loo. It wasn't you. It's that stench. I'm sorry, dearie. Just wh go back to sleep. I was dreaming of sugar plums. Then along came the ghost of Christmas ass. Uh, listen, just, just give me a second, okay? And I'll wrap this right up. What is that smell? Oh, geez, not again. Who do you see, Nicholas? Please. Girls, go back to bed. He's dropping Yule logs down his chimney. Come on now, a little privacy would be great. I've been holding this thing since Dubai. The whole house smells like a gingerbread manslaughter. I'm sorry. Uh, it's the milk and cookies, okay? Every year destroys me. Well, now that you're here, dumping lumps of coal in our toilet, what did you get me for Christmas? <laughs> Grizz! I don't make a meal of it, okay? It's not that bad. Look what I found! Jesus, there's another one? Whoa, put that back. That's I was looking around for that horrible stench, and I found this under the tree. That's not for <gasps> you. I found hundreds of them, all for us. As soon as I'm done here, I'm going to get those gifts back, oh my and you're all going on the naughty list. Oh, yeah? Then I'm going to put you on Instagram. Hashtag busted. Do you know who I am? You have any idea? Put it in the cloud with his stinky thoughts. You can't blackmail Santa. Look, Kringle. 
You never should have pinched off a hot slice of fruitcake without using poopery. 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 The gift that stops stinking. Since we're exchanging gifts, here's one for you. Next time, spritz the bowl before you go, and no one else will ever know. So you can keep sneaking without reeking. And your dingleberries will smell like jingleberries. Anything else? Yeah, Santa. Hurry up! I really need to take a. Jingle bells, your poo smells before you drop a bomb. Click right here to save your rear at poopery.com. All right, welcome to abbreviated trivia. How you guys doing? Hi. That was an abbreviated hello. Hi. Let's get to it then. This is going to be the same game we played last week where you're going to see a few pictures and you have to put the pictures together to determine which player I'm trying to show you. All right, these are all Rams players. All right, here we go. For 100, name the player. Hello. Is that Pfeiffer? Yeah. You have a guy named Pfeiffer? Boombox Pfeiffer? Yeah. M music, music blonde. I, <laughs> I, Matthew Stafford. Seriously, I made this one the first one because it's so easy. Uh... Sony, Sony Michelle! Is that the Sony oh, yeah. Michelle? Yeah. There you go, Sony Michelle. There we go. There you go for 200. Name the player. Cooper Cup. <laughs> that is correct. Love the cup, by the way. <laughs> okay, here we go for 300. Name the player. Van, Van Jefferson. Van Jefferson. <laughs> uh. All right, three out of three. Here we go. Name the player. Um... Oh, that's Jesse Pinkman, um, Donald Duck, uh, Duck, I, uh... Aaron Donald. Yes! Oh, <laughs> I couldn't remember his first name! <laughs> All right, for 500, name the player. John something must horse stang. John. I know what this is. Is it? I'm pretty sure. Is this Vince Ferragamo? Nope. Oh. That's what I was going to say. Uh, Vinny Wool? Is it Wool, Ted? John. Wool Mustang? Wool Ford? Wolford! John Wolford! <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue who John Wolford is, but we just got it. All right. All right, here we go. Part two. Name the player. Leonard Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard Floyd. Lee, okay, yeah. Good job, Drew. <laughs> 200. Name the player. Jalen Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Good job. I had no idea. Good job. Here we go. Name the player. Cam. Cam Akers. <laughs> <laughs> Not his, hers. Oh, <laughs> I, I was going to say Cam Fowler. All right. 400. Name the player. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> um, His food? Ramsey. It's her, it's his something. His, 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 what is that first thing, Ted? Is that I, like King ancient Tyler Egyptian, Egypt, <laughs> Cairo. Him, him. What's the cat food thing, Ted? Give, give it Morris. Him Morris. Something last name Morris. Something him. him Raheem Morris. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my that is god. The sun god Ra. Ra. <laughs> Saved a per we got a perfect game going. We're like a we're like the ninth <laughs> inning with a perfect game, and Ted just saved us with the line drive spear. All right, last one. Here we go. Name the player. Joey Mac. Joey Mac Mackenham. What the hell is that thing in the? Who's that person in the middle? Oh, it's Beck. Beck. Joey Beck Beckham. Right. So Od Od <laughs> Odell Beckham. <laughs> Oh, Dell, Beckham. That, <laughs> that is tremendously done, Jason. Uh, oh, all right. All Thanks, right. guys, for playing abbreviated trivia. We'll see you for full trivia next week. Thanks, Tunes. Thanks, Tunes. We are turbo this week. All right. So that'll that'll wrap up our abbreviated show. It's Christmas Eve. I hope uh, hope you're spending time with family and loved friends and loved ones. Hope you're on Santa's good boy or girl list. Thank you to all of you that have, have subscribed over the past year. I mean, we're almost at our one year mark. I think our next show will be our one year kind of anniversary show. I wish I had enough money to get presents to everybody that subscribes and watches and comments. I just, 
Thank you. It's been a it's been a, an incredible year. Thanks, Drew. Thanks, Ruby. Thanks, Liz. Thanks to all of you who watch. I hope you all have a very merry and blessed Christmas, and we will see you Sunday after the Vikings Rams game. Drew, why don't you take us home? Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good Vikings report night. Thank you, Ted Glover. <laughs> Ted Glover, you're an amazing host this year, but Christmas present wise, I'm getting you the same thing I got you last year. Nothing, huh? No, it's like John McClain would say, come on down, have some laughs. <laughs> we have a good time. We have some laughs. Um, thank you, everybody. I want everybody to have a great Christmas. Like and subscribe to our show. Don't forget, the fantasy football contest is running out. There's only three weeks left, but everybody is within striking distance. So get your votes in for whichever team you think is going to win this week. Can't thank you enough for watching and supporting our show and the job everybody does involved. Tunes on the production and the funny trivia. Again, have a great Christmas. Everybody be safe. Don't start anything on fire. <laughs> and say good night, Ted. Good night, Ted. I want an official Red Rider carbon action to inch your wings while air rifle. Ooh. Yo, shoot your eye out. Yo, shoot your eye out. <laughs> You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. I think you might be overdoing it, Dad. Russ, when was the last time I overdid anything? Come on, unravel these. You have to check every bulb. Oops, a little knot here. Work on that. I'll get the other box.